Tracy started her career at the Chicago Board of Trade as a futures broker specializing in options and managed futures over 12 years ago. Soon after, she moved to the trade floor where she managed an institutional trade desk, working with some of the top investment banks, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, SoftGen, and hedge funds such as SAC and Disho as well as energy OTC markets via CME Clearport. He's now an independent trader specializing in the energy markets. Recurring guest interviews featured on Drill Vision, Macro Voices, CME Futures Now, and Benzinga Pre-Market Prep. Tracy is a graduate from University of Southern California with degrees in political science and international relations with an emphasis as on the Middle East. Welcome, Tracy. It's good to have you on board. And Dennis will say hi before we start. Hey, hi, Shy Girl. Oh, sorry, Tracy. Hi. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I think one works. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a big follower, I'm a big fan on Twitter. So that's why I'm saying Shy Girl. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. Um. I just wanna. I just wanna thank you for accepting. You know, to speak to us. You know, um. You know, trading is kinda an emerging thing in this part of the world, especially trading derivatives. Guys mostly trade um securities. You know, the buy and hold strategies. But speculating on derivatives, it's it's really a new thing, and it's quite a privilege and an honor to speak to someone who um has experience in the industry. And uh, I really do hope to get inspired and to learn from you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Tracy, you can start by telling us briefly okay. about your trading journey and why you trade oil. Well, um, I started, like I said, at the Chicago Board of Trade. And um, I uh, actually, I got into oil because it was my, I was, selling options. I was an options broker and it was my first winning trade. <laughs> so I stuck with oil and it went with my background. It went with my background as well with, um, you know, studying international relations as well. And um, so I, I kind of just stuck with it. Okay. What year was that? Um, so that was, I started in 2006. 2006 so yeah 12 that should be about more than a decade so you specialize in oil can you tell us why you decided to go that way um i, just, I really like the way that it trades um you know it's kind of a faster trade um and it's a lot of different ways you can trade the spread or you can trade the spread between you know the two benchmark contracts WTI and Brent um, you can trade intermonth spreads um, there are options and um, of course futures so there's a lot of flexibility with oil and how and how to trade it and for beginning traders can you tell us the difference between Brent and WTI you mentioned Sure. Um, so Brent is the benchmark contract for and WTI is exclusively um, Amer U.S. It's a, it's a U.S. contract. Um, so those are the two benchmarks. And um, Brent is actually North Sea, um, but it contains five different uh, five different types of North Sea oil. Okay, would you say uh, trading oil, is it capital intensive? Do you need a lot of capital to trade oil? Well, I mean, if you would need, you know, you need a, a good size account. If you have a smaller account, I would suggest trading. Um, they have, do have mini contracts, so uh, which would be for, for any beginner, I would probably suggest trading that um, and that's a mini contract just means that um, the 
the tick value is less than than the big contract. So you, it requires less margin, and um, you know it's it, it, you know your losses won't be as giant. <laughs> Either way, you win. But um, it's a better contract, I think, if you're a newer trader and newer to oil. Um, then I would definitely suggest using um, the, one of the mini contracts. Oh, Tracy, um, I, I, when I look at your bio, you kind of, you know, you kind of started trading with um, these big names. Um, you, you must have been trading, you know, this huge pile of cash, I guess, as your starting capital. So um, did you get a lot of mentorship? And what kind of mentorship did you get, you know, coming, you know, straight from university, having studied political science and international relations, and then you are throwing yourself into, you know, trading, you know, how, how was the experience, you know, the, the mentorship, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, well, I was very fortunate to um, be able to work on the trade floor, which they don't really have it, which is gone now. Um, but, and so I worked with, you know, I, I wasn't a floor trader, I managed the desk. So my mentor was, um, the trader that I was working for. So, you know, I, I got a lot of sort of hands-on training that way, even though it's a totally different kind of way of trading, you know, it's different than, but I, I, you know, I got a lot of training there. Um, and then, um, you know, we traded some on screen too, but so that's really, you know, I got lucky because I had a mentor. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I would suggest too, if, if you're a newer trader, um, if you can find a mentor, then, you know, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. So, uh, basically your, your learning curve wasn't as long and as painful, uh, for, you know, for some of us who don't really have mentors. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I mean, I, you know, and, and throughout the year, throughout the years, I mean, not only, you know, I had, you know, I had a mentor, but, you know, I also, you know, have worked. I mean, it still took me years to come up with, you know, my system that works for me. You know, everybody's got a kind of a different trading system. So, you know, it, it doesn't, I mean, it's not, you're not going to be successful overnight. It's just not going to happen. It takes years of practice. So, you know, for newer traders, I would say don't get discouraged right away, even though it can kind of be discouraging because, you know, it takes people, it takes a long time. And, but if you put enough effort into it and this is really what you want to do, then absolutely you can be successful at it. Oh, uh, and um, what, what about, you know, the, the transition from the floor and then to onto computer screens? You know, was it kind of difficult for you or um, you transitioned smoothly? And, and what about your mentor, you know, once things yeah. started becoming computerized? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we still use the computer for, you know, I mean, I was still kind of, it, it, we were still using the computer even though we were trading on the floor. So, you know, I didn't have to really go from just floor trading to, not, you know, electronic, never having electronic before. So I kind of was fortunate that I was, you know, you know, I, it was in the thousands, so you know, electronic trading was already started. So I kind of was doing kind of both at the same time. Oh, cool, cool. Um, now, um, I, I, would, I would really like to, you know, take this much more deeper. Like, uh, talk about, you know, your your trading process. I mean, um, are you more fundamentally oriented or technically oriented? You know, how do you play? Um, well, I mean, I have two two views. I mean, I, I post a lot of fundamental things because yeah, I think yeah, that is important I see, uh, and yeah, I really yeah. like it. Your Twitter, I, I really um, love the research that you post on Twitter. It's it's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, I mean, I kind of use both. If I'm, you know, for intraday trading, I I use pure technicals for, okay. you know, intraday trading. But if I'm going into, but I mean, but, but I take a fundamental, I take an overview of what is happening in the market to kind of then fine tune it to the technicals. Like you have to know, you know, what's going on fundamentally. Is there, you know, are there problems in the Middle East? Is there, you know, a problem with, who knows, transportation? I mean, a million things can come up and that, of course, 
it's going to you know affect the price of oil and how it's trading so i think trading oil you kind of have to have a balance between the book between the two but when i'm actually just interday trading um it's all based it's all technical based so um but i have a general bias to kind of the direction that it's going with a macro view oh well, kind of more when it comes to you know direction um kind of trend following when you talk about directional or not really yeah i mean if, no more like um if i have a macro view of of the market you know I, you know that, that's more biased towards being bullish then that's going to give me kind of the outlook how i'm going to trade the product Does that makes sense so if yeah. i you know or if it's a bearish you know that's going to give me you know i that kind of the sense of direction where i think oil would be headed and then again then i fine tune it to you know when i'm intraday trading it's it's all based on levels and um you know it's a technical trade and oil trades very technically okay um yeah i, I have seen most of the charts that you normally put up on twitter and i i see that you you, you really you do a lot of volume profiling you know right yes yes i use tpo which is um which is um, more about market structure it's a market profile where and there's market profile and there's volume profile okay. so tpo is market profile and it kind of gives you i like it a little better than volume profile although i use both because it shows you more of the market structure so you know those charts that i post the, the tpo charts where you know i say there's repair areas where we need to go back yeah. volume profile won't show you those areas whereas uh, market profile will okay um is it is it does it um when when new guys were trading on the floor back then in the day you know getting a feel of uh, who's buying who is selling does it bring in that feel in the process you know using market profile and, and volume profile um I, i mean well you don't know who i mean unlike the floor where you know people would call like you knew who was buying and who was selling um because you know the banks would call or who you know whoever you were executing for everybody kind of knew who was buying what and who is not now electronically you have no idea who is you know the buyer or the seller on the other side of your trade you have no idea so um you know you kind of I, i i mean that's when i use um like a footprint chart yeah because then you can at least i can see you know if there's a hunt trading even though i don't know who they are Okay um yeah really yeah yeah cool So uh Tracy given your level of experience what are some of the rules that you cannot compromise on when you're trading Well I mean I have I mean I I have very you know set I kind of I have a system so I really have it down to I kind of make the same trades all day long um but you know when you're newer i think you should have rules like you know if you have three i mean this is what you know uh, i used to do is you know if you have three bad trades in a row you get a timeout <laughs> um cuz then you just start you know making more mistakes and things like that and, you know and it just kind of compounds into just a slew of bad ideas so i have definitely have rules that you know if you know re losing trades time out for you for the day um you know walk away you're cuz you're not thinking straight um so the basic you know set of rules kind of like in that um but otherwise it's just you know following my system yeah um i i also have you know, if you have a if you have a yeah i i also have this rule i call it the three strike rule you know strike one two yeah. three i'm out <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah cool so um kind of when you when you when you want to put on those trades um are you are you using you know discretionary judgment or you know is your system really purely systematic yeah i mean it's it's a, it's a discretional system i mean and i don't have anything automated um oh okay but i uh, but i definitely have you know i so i'm i'm actually clicking the buttons um but it's still you know but it's a system that you know if this and this occurs or if it reaches this level then i take this trade 
um, you know, I kind of have a list that that I've made throughout the years, like this is a high probability trade, this is a medium probability trade, this is a low probability trade, um, you know, and what factors in. So my high probability trades I take no matter what without thinking. Um, medium probability trades are kind of, you know, I need a little bit more information um, and same with, you know, lower probability trades, I, you know, it has to have, everything has to match up for, for me to take one of those. But you know, I think that each trader should kind of, you know, figure out you know, what trades work the best and what trades work the best for them. Um, and then, you know, cut, stick to that system. <laughs> and and, and uh, I think you, you must be very disciplined, you know, like sticking to that system. And uh, there is this, you know, requires this discretionary judgment for you to make. Um, you must be very disciplined. Oh, yeah. I mean, you... Well, you, you have to, I mean, you have to, I mean, I, you know, when I first started, I lost yeah. a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, talk about that. So, yeah, talk about um, that. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know any good trader that has not blown out at least one account. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody starts <laughs> off and they're, you know, best trader right away. The best traders I know have, you know, blown out accounts more than one, at, you know, early in their career so you know that's I did it everybody I know has done it it just you know unfortunately that's kind of part of the learning curve <laughs> yeah have so you, as soon have, as you know that stuff that happens to you hmm. when that happens to you you have to go okay I need to rethink how I'm doing this <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> have you know have you ever been in this you know um, trades maybe positions which give you, you know, sleepless nights and um, coming there, you're oh, sure. getting your system, sure. you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, I have been there many times. You know, I don't, it, yes, unless I'm in like a, you know, I don't, unless I'm in a swing trade, um, you know, and I'm pretty sure about, you know, direction and I'm, you know, set on that. I mean, I don't even hold overnight day trades anymore because it's, I, I, Okay. I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. And and have you ever thought of automating your system? You know, so I, I have that. Yeah. I, and I've I've worked you know a little bit with automation. Um. I you know I I'm not a coder <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. So you know I've had to hire a coder, and I've kind of I probably you know it's it's not hard to do, but um I've probably been a little lazy on it <laughs> I, I could work a little bit harder on it but um or, or life, you know, it, might, life might get boring you know like you just right <laughs> <laughs> and and i know you you love action you know i can see it on your twitter you know twitter um on your twitter uh, you know you love action you're always engaging and um you know i i guess yeah. It has to do with your experience, you know, on, on the floor, you know. I, I guess you guys always there chatting up and, and, you know, calling out trades. Yeah. Okay. So can you tell us a bit about your risk management tools that you, you can swear by? I'm kind of a control freak, too. I feel like if I just let the computer trade for me, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And how do you deal with your emotions, say, when you have losing trades and when you have winning trades? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, I mean, it's hard. I think after a, a while, you kind of start to distance yourself from it. But I mean, you know, there's always a little bit of emotion involved. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, you're, you know, it's still an emotional game. You just, you know, I mean, there are still trades that, you know, I have to sometimes walk away from the screen and just let let the trade work because <laughs> if I stare at it I start getting you know like you know and you know I start getting you know freaked out about it so you know <laughs> if you feel if you're sure about the trade and you know I mean if you put a trade on you put a stop on you have to be able to let it work or you get stopped out you define your risk and sometimes you just have to walk away from the screen and let it go and it either is you know either works or it doesn't and you know every trade is like that there is no guarantee for any trade so you you know if you use stocks and define your risk then 
you know, you have to be willing to go into the trade saying, I'm ready to lose X amount of dollars on this. That's what I've defined for this trade. And, um, you know, you have to go into it thinking, I'm going to lose this money. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, because you've defined your risk. And then the trade works, the trade works, that's great. Uh, and, you know, I mean, you only have to be right 60% of the time and be successful. You know, every trade isn't going to work. Yeah. And talking about um, stops, when, when you put on those positions, before you put on those positions, of course, as you said, you know, you have this predetermined risk. Um, when you're putting on your trades, do you, do, you put on, do you put them on with a trailing stops or, you know, you just have these solid targets? No, I, I do. Use I mean, I, as the trade moves in my favor, then I start moving the stop up, right? So, um, you know, I wait for a certain level, you know, after X amount of ticks, I'll move my stop to break even. And then I sort of just follow the trade up. Okay, um, cool, cool. Um, Tracy, tell us how you evaluate a, a good trade and what you would classify as a good trade. Well, one, uh, um, a winning trade, <laughs> one that I make money is a good trade. Do you define like a good trade being the one which you made money or the one which you, you know, even the, the trade which you lost money, but you know, you followed your rules or the one which you make money. That's yeah. A, I mean, I, as long as, no, I mean, as long as you follow your rules, even if it's, doesn't work out then it's still a good trade i mean you can't the market's not controllable right so it's it's not you know, about the money we can use our best judgment to put on trades no i mean it's not you know it, it's about following your rules in your system and if it doesn't work out then you know it doesn't work out but you know if you follow your rules that's a good trade if you start not following your rules that's a reckless trade But bottom line, you have to make money anyways. Well, yes. I mean, if you want, I mean, you have to make money if you want to do this for a living. But, um, you know, for newer traders, like I said, don't get discouraged right away. I know it can be discouraging um, and frustrating, but we all went through it. And, you know, <laughs> you can do it if you really want it. <laughs> yeah. So there's this saying that goes like you can't measure what you can't count. How do you normally evaluate your performance and, you know, to help track your trading, you know, journey? How do you do that? Well, I have, I mean, I used to journal everything, um, but the platform that I use now, I can run a daily report and it tells me, you know, my winning trades, my losing trades, what is my percentage? But as you know, so I would, I, most of the platforms have that these days. So um, if you can, you know, run a report at the end of the day for yourself and um, either keep it in a file on your computer or um, I used to keep them in a binder, run them every, every night, every night, keep them in a binder. Um, so, it, so anyway, you should keep track of your trades at the end of the day, whether, you know, it's electronically or if you want to journal it or, you know, however your platform works. But, you know, I always run my reports still to this day. Okay. And does that have a positive effect on your performance? Well, absolutely. Because then, you know, I can go through and say, you know, what did it, what didn't work? What wasn't, what wasn't working for me today? Was it, you know, just the market wasn't working? Was it, and was I not following my rules? Was I, you know, it just allows you to kind of look, you know, I'm ha I had a bad day. Now, why did I have a bad day? Was it just the market wasn't working, um, you know, with my rules? Or, you know, was I the one, was I doing something wrong or, you know, outside of my rules? Oh, yeah, cool. So, um, Tracy, now, do you, do you have a sort of, you know, this question might sound maybe somehow off, but I think it's important. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> do, 
Yeah. Do, do you th- do you have like sort of a, a trading philosophy or you know a, a belief of as to how the market works and um, can you can you basically you know, share that you know your philosophy or your belief based on your observation while you're trading when when you used to trade on the floor and now as you're trading you know electronically do you have a philosophy and and a belief as to how the markets work and, yeah. Uh, I mean I don't. I guess I don't really have like a philosophy or maybe I don't really understand the question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, I, I don't really have an, I don't think I have a good answer for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, there are the other guys who, you know, you know trend following and, and, you know, they'll say this is our market's trend. Market yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, but I'm not. You know, I'm not really mm-hmm. because I intraday trade. I'm trading yeah. long mm-hmm. and short all day long, right? If I'm in a swing trade, I'm trend following, right? Okay. But, you know, if I'm, you know, I, and I don't like trading platitudes. I don't like those trading sayings. I think. Okay. Oh, cool. So, like in a day, you can you can go long, you can go short you know mean reversion trade. oh yes all day long oh um wow that's yeah i mean all day long I, I trade long and short so there's money to be made on both sides i mean mm. you know mm. some the market's moving up and down all day so you know i per, most traders prefer one side or the other i prefer the short side oh wow that, that, that's kind of i i really find that you know amazing you know going both long and short and and maintaining your discipline and then watching your emotions it's it's really cool it's really cool so um <laughs> yeah so um how how is your typical trading day you know like um what time do you start do you wait for a report to be released maybe or you know or, yeah or, i mean i how is your typical trading day you know when I, you sit in your desk and then you start so I, when I, you know, I, I get up really early. I get up at like 5 a.m. Um, and I read Twitter and find and, and news and all the reports that I get. Um, so I get my fundamentals all taken care of, like my first hour of the day, catch up on what happened on the overnight, you know, what's going on. I get a ton of uh, reports every morning. So, you know, I kind of go over those, whether they're macro reports, commodity reports, okay. things like that. Then I come to my desk. And then I decide, you know, I, I trade not most of what I trade is oil, but you know, I do trade a few other things, Euro, um, ES, um, and sometimes, you know, platinum. So I kind of decide what, you know, what am I looking at today? I mean, I look at every product that I trade and at first I start, always start with the largest charts. So I always start with a daily chart, okay. go over, daily chart and then I kind of work my way down time frame wise into um, a tick chart. I day trade off of 500 tick chart. So, um, but at first I want to know, you know, I need a macro view of what is happening in, um, in that particular market. And I suggest that for everyone. So, you know, I look at a daily, then a four hour, then an hourly, um, a 30 minute, and then down to, you know, my smaller time frame. Okay. Um. Yeah. Sounds. Sounds. You know. Sounds organized, structured, and and intense. You know. Looking at a tick chart. Um. I I have a friend right. who normally calls it ex, uh, extreme sports. You know, like <laughs> trading off the tick charts. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. would you say uh, your trading style is a reflection of your personality? I would think so. I mean, the market, the markets that you choose, I think, is a reflection of people's personalities like for instance you know I'm kind of a a enthusiastic person I have kind of big personality so you know the products that I trade generally move faster (laughs) Um, so I think every trader does that if you want something that moves slower then you know I would say like the US treasuries or bonds or something like that it's a much slower trade if you that's more geared towards your personality. So I think the products you pick kind of um, are dependent on you know what kind of personality you are. Okay. Um, 
is there anyone you know you are mentoring or something of the sort i mean um how 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 do people come to you and tell you you know teachers show us uh, how to train and all that blah, blah, yeah, blah. i mean i do uh, i do offer some mentoring on a limited basis um because i am a full-time trader but yeah. um but yes i mean i you know so you know but if it's if people want to reach out that's okay um but it's you know really dependent on my schedule and things like that okay cool um and then another thing um i have seen um on your on your twitter timeline i've seen you drawing a correlation between the euro and and oil uh, i think i've seen something like that um, mm -hmm. yeah can you can you kindly you know elaborate on that so uh, well what happens is is that and i wrote something up on uh, i wrote something up on my website shygirl.com if you i haven't really kept up the site that much but i do have um a couple recent posts that i think are beneficial if you want to go look at that um but it's basically because what happens is is that um or, uh, people that hedge their oil um big companies like Saudi Arabia, whatever they mm -hmm. they hedge it with euro, is the long mm -hmm. and short of it. So oh, okay. um, you know it's a it's a commodity it's it's a commodity currency. So it's um, CAD six uh, C um, just as you know um, Aussie dollar is correlated with gold. So there are commodity currencies depending on what you want to trade um, that you know are very correlated. And of, of recent, you know, I've been, I, you know, I've been looking at the charts, and then um, I, um, historically, uh, the dollar and oil, they have always, okay, using the word always. Let me not use the word always, but there is this uh, strong inverse correlation. But of late, I'm just seeing them moving together. Uh, I don't know if you have observed that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, you know, the the saying it goes, the correlations work until they don't. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, they come in and out. So you can't, you can't. They're not always one hundred percent dependent. So you know, a market can be correlated. Um, you know, and, and some markets go in and out of correlation. You know, sometimes you, you notice like oil and ES used to you know trade almost exactly together. Now that correlation's off. Um, the dollar and oil used to be inverse. Now it's not. So you know, correlations I don't are not a hundred percent. So don't think that you know they're always going to be a hundred percent. Okay. Um, cool. Cool. Do you do you see oil taking out last week's high? You know, I'm. I don't want you to predict. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, I follow price. I don't like to make those kind of sweeping <laughs> judgments. You know, I I think that you know we have some repair in the 70s um that i'd like to see done and then um we'll take it from there but i try to level the levels so i'm not one of those people people ask me all the time where's oil going to be in <laughs> i have no idea a million things could happen between now and six months. <laughs> yeah probably that's why i've never seen you on cnbc yeah probably right, <laughs> right? <laughs> Tracy, uh, with the advent of electric cars, where do you foresee oil, you know, in the long haul? As well, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, everybody talks about, you know, the peak demand. We had peak oil where, you know, we were running out of oil and then that's no longer, um, that's been proven wrong. And so now we have peak demand because of electric vehicles. Um, you know, I still think that, that any kind of transition to um, electric vehicles is going to be a slow one um and you know i think that there's still even if every car turns you know electric and we had no gas automobiles oil is still used for petrochemicals for you know every plastic every you know i so i don't really see that you know it, it going away anytime probably in our lifetimes <laughs> <laughs> so um but definitely i mean i you know i think it down the road obviously that you know it'll affect demand oil price will probably get lower but you know as of now we use oil to make so many different things you know it's not just for um petrol for your car it's used in a lot of other things as well so 
Okay. Uh, what would be your parting shot to beginning and even experienced traders, but who want to take up trading and be in it, like for the long haul? No, um, like I said, you know, like I said, just keep at it. Um, know that it's not easy, but if you really want it, you can, you know, just work hard and, you know, get a system that works. Um, and, you know, you'll probably fail more than once, <laughs> um, but that's all part of the journey. So, you know, keep at it. And uh, do you have any literature that you can recommend to? Like um, sort of any, any books that inspired you, you know, as you are. You um, well, yeah. um, I've read um, Jay Dalton's Mind Over Markets. Um, also, Stiedelmeyer has a book on uh, market profile. He's actually the one that um, he discovered it or, you know, made it. Um, so that, if you, you want to study market profile, I think that's a, a really good book. Um, not just for oil, for, you know, for any market that you trade. And Mind Over Markets by Jay Dalton is another really good one um, for just trading in general. Okay, um, you did mention your website, and I also think Twitter is also another place where people can go and find your work. Is that right? Yep, I mean, yep, I mostly, I mean, I post a lot on Twitter, um, and I have my website, and um, that's, what, that's what I have right now. <laughs> okay, uh, we really thank you for taking the time. Um, we'd love to have you again in the future. I hope you can be open for that. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.